Look, I came here with great expectations, thinking that indeed with all the oil monies and the fact that Guyana is the 10th richest country in the world per capita, that we're going to have a better deal, especially for working poor. My expectations were dashed completely. I saw in this budget a lot of the money is going towards infrastructural works. And indeed, we're going to have lots of infrastructural works from schools, health, roads, and all of that. But if you do not do the correct thing of balancing the incomes or the socioeconomic positions of the people, especially the working people, you are not going to have a satisfied society. More people are still going to want to go to that passport office and then to the American embassy to get out of the place. And to the extent then I did not see anything much for working poor, and even worse still, that $3,000 for pensioners and the minimum where you have for medical relief, even for eye care and all of that, it goes to show that this government has no care for the ordinary Ghanaians. It has for, and it is lavishing monies to its contractor, crony capitalists that we have here, which word they use in the budget to describe as entrepreneurs. We know where all those hundreds of billions of dollars are now going to go. And especially in the context of so many substandard contracts, there will be a rip off from this, this budget. I want to say that, you know, we stand in the Alliance for Change and in the coalition with the APNU for shared prosperity. This budget is a very distant thing from shared prosperity here in Guyana. We are not going to end poverty and hunger and hopelessness with budgets like these. We're not going to do that. We're going to have more and more people getting vexed, and especially PPP support bases now. Because quite frankly, with all that money, I see that they are going to be quarreling with them. Our public servants haven't gotten a good deal. And what we didn't even hear them mention anything about the public servants. What this government does, indeed, it puts a lump sum for public servants. But then on the 12th, our literally every year, then they give them. People are suffering now because of that scandalously lying inflation rate they talk about, 2%. It is not 2%. That inflation rate is a lot of crap. They must understand that people know two years ago, a slice of pumpkin was $100. Now is what? $1,000. What's a pound of chicken? What a pound for meat and fish and all of those things? The prices have skyrocketed in the supermarkets and in the markets all across and shops and so on. So when they are going to give the impression that they are for the poor people, they are not. I want to make mention that they are falsely claiming too that the cost got to do with a lot of exogenous factors. COVID since COVID days uh, the, the, and then the war in Ukraine and all manner of other things. Look. Guyanese, if given a proper salary or wages, are going to do better. And that will take them out of this impoverished state. Um, I, I always like to quote back their founder leader in this PVP government, Chedi Jagan. He always say a concentration of affluence begets more affluence. And a concentration of poverty is going to beget more poverty. This is what this budget will do. The rich will get richer in this country, and the inequality between the rich and the poor, the, the, the inequalities in this country, that is the distance between rich and poor, is going to magnify and amplify. This budget does not do anything to help in that regard. Their priorities too are wrong. Priorities, I could understand infrastructural works are needed, but you've got to do the balancing act. Take, for example, like in the police, and the public sector area. You're going to build quite a lot of police stations and rehabilitate others, but you have not done also the other thing to the policemen who are largely constables being 
with a minimum wage, literally. And what kind of investigations they're going to do on a salary that can't mind themselves, their children, their wife, and also pay the rents and all of that. You're going to have all manner of ugly habits persisting as a result. I want to say also that they, there was a, a point that was made in relation to education. Education too. You're only spending $4 billion in your University of Guyana, and you're going and pour over $6 billion to Gaisuko. Why you want the children of the sugar estates to continue to cut cane and fetch, fetch it to the pond? What kind of mentality is that? You need to do lots more to ensure that these children of the estates come out of that poverty strickenness and get into the University of Guyana, get training, skills training. As the minister mentioned, we need more plumbers, we need more masons, we need more, so many other things. And yet it's pumping money for sugarcane workers to get money so that they can go and cut cane and fetch cane. That is atrocious. They don't like their people, quite frankly, or they like them in that state of uneducatedness because they can then go and put a lot of lies in their heads and tell them that, you know, that is good for you. They closed down the estate and so on. We had also a, a motive for closing it down because we want to wean people away from that estate kind of life. I don't want my brethren in quarantine to just be cutting cane. But you know, this is what they do. Gaisuko, of course, will be getting a further $6 billion. As I have indicated, Gaisuko ain't got a future but they're going to pump at least six to seven billion dollars into Gaisuko again this year. It is a black hole. It is wrong priorities. But these people seem not to care. And that is the kind of first impressions that I had in relation to this budget. But we're going to deal with a lot more issues. Clearly, the relief for the poor, pensioners, students, university students is not there. The relief is not there. Um, look at that, $3,000 the pensioners can get. What do $3,000 can buy? Three slices of pumpkin. It's a shame. And the 10th richest country in the world with a natural resource fund that is billions of US dollars, never before. The point should be made that in the coalition government, we had five budgets that come up total 1.2 billion or thereabouts, trillion, sorry, I made a mistake, 1.1 trillion Guyana dollars. In this budget, and you know what we did with that five separate budgets? We increased salaries and wages by over 26 percent. What have they done in this one here? We don't even know about salaries increases. And then they're going to, as I said, leave it at the very bottom end of the year. When the people would have been suffering from January to November, then December, they're going to say, yes, we're going to give you an increase. That's not how you run country, especially a poor country of Guyana. Poor meaning with the salary levels and so on. We got plenty money. We must make a better deal for Guyana. And those are the initial points I wish to make at this stage.